Hi everyone, good morning. Morning, Thursday, nice to see you. Thanks for all your lovely comments the last few days on the devotionals and uh, for your uh, well wishes for me. I did get into the dentist, so um, that's all underway. Thanks for your prayers. Uh, we're going to read Psalm 20 and uh, meditate on it together for a few moments. Uh, Psalm 20 for the director of music, a Psalm of David. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will shout for joy when you are victorious and will lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. O oh Lord, save the king. Answer us when we call. Um, I remember as a kid singing a couple of lines from this song. Uh, I remember our youth group and I remember singing some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Did you used to sing that? Yeah, my mum used to sing that. How does it go? Well, the one we sang was some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Yep, that's the one. We all used to sing that as kids. And um, the old simple ones were the best. <laughs> and um, I think singing scripture is a great thing. It just sticks in your brain, doesn't it? And you remember it for life. Um, I think we should do it more. Mm. Um but some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Of course, we don't really use chariots and horses anymore. We've, uh, we've moved on, but we could substitute all kinds of things into those lines. Some trust in their wealth or some trust in their intellectual capabilities or some trust in their social standing or some trust in tanks and airplanes. Or, mm. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. There's a passage in Isaiah... Uh, chapter 31 it says woe to those who go to Egypt for help who rely on horses who trust in the multitude of their chariots and in the great strength of their horsemen but do not look to the Holy One of Israel or seek help from the Lord yet he too is wise and can bring disaster he does not take back his words he will rise up against the house of the wicked against those who help evildoers but the Egyptians are men and not God their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, he who helps will stumble, he who is helped will fall, both will perish together. So it's, we will, it says here in the NIV, we will trust in the name of the Lord our God, or as we used to sing it, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. The original language says remember or invoke, we will invoke the name of the Lord our God. We will call out the name of our God. We will trust in him. And um, I guess so often in life, it's true, isn't it? We will depend on other things. We'll have other crutches, have other idols, have other things that we rely on, often on our own self as well. But it's a great thing to rely on God and to trust in him and to call on him. And the Israelites always did better when they did that, when they really trusted in God as their strength, even in the face of insurmountable odds or terrible unwinnable situations when God was in on the action amazing things happened and it's the same for us we need to call on the name of the Lord and ask him for his help and and be bold in our asking and be faith filled in our requests um, that God would help us what is it that you need God to help you with to intervene in some area of work some area of life some relationship issues some finance or health circumstance that we call on we trust in and believe in the help of God and there's such certainty in the in the king as he replies to these requests and prayers of the people where he says they are brought down to their knees and fall but we rise up and stand firm 
He says in the verse before, I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Uh, the righteous right hand of God is often a sign of strength. The saving power of his right hand. So there's great confidence here in this turning towards God. And we should do it more <laughs> and not less and turn to God for our help. And maybe some of the things that we've relied on um, to get ourselves out of scrapes or out of situations or through life that um, we would do so much better not to trust in chariots or horses or the strength of man, but the amazing strength of God um, and his help. And uh, we can cry out like the people here, oh Lord, save. <laughs> And the king answer us when we call, oh Lord, save. And that covers this whole passage, really. Lord, save us, help us, reach out to us. Do you have any thoughts, Jenny? Yeah, I thought it's interesting that this is like, it's the commentaries say that this is before David goes out to battle. So this is almost like a rallying battle cry. And um, it's interesting, isn't it, that like, presumably he's surrounded by his horses and chariots by his um, weapons of war that would um, give him success if the better the weapon the better the more successful the king I would have thought but he's saying I'm not gonna rely on these horses and chariots and often in life we have we have certain expectations don't we um, a faith or, or just in life we think our help will come from a certain source or our help will come from this person or that person or, or this job or um, this social standing, as Jeff said, just different things we have to rely on for our self-worth and our um, security. And I'm sure you can tell many stories where, um, you know, God has provided in, in different ways. And I know, for example, we had, um, I, I translate, that's my job from home. Um, and um, we had a customer that we'd worked for for like, I don't know, 10, 15 years, a long, long time. And suddenly that that just kind of collapsed. And it was it was, you know, freaky and 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 scary. But um, just out of nowhere, this this new agency popped up and they started giving us, um, you know, reg or giving me regular work. And it just was another sign of how God can bring help from unexpected places. And um, Martin Luther said, pray and let God worry. So um, it's, it's a challenge, isn't it, sometimes? You know, when you're faced with, you know, a concrete problem, ill health or, um, you know, financial problems or a, a relationship breakdown, and you, you reach back to your tried and tested methods um, that help you and you find they don't help you anymore. Um, like a king in battle, you know, the horses and chariots could only help him so far. Um, you know, if another army came with better horses and chariots, then then he was stuffed, you know. So it's it's always better to to you know rely on God instead of instead of these trappings around us. Somebody said once, man says, humans say, show me and I will trust you. And the state I come from is called the show me state. Missouri is it's supposed to be like, I don't believe you till you show me. So show me till I tr and I will trust you. But God says, trust me and I will show you. So, um, and then in a, in a, in a book, um, Candle in the Darkness, somebody says um, to somebody who's, who's worrying faith, don't come in a bushel basket. It comes one step at a time. Decide to trust God, him, for one little thing today. And before you know it, you find out he's so trustworthy You'll be putting your whole life into his hands. So it's, it's little steps, isn't it? Just trusting him for that one little thing. And uh, remembering the, the great hymn by Isaac Watts, Our God, Our Help in Ages Past. There's one verse in there that I think is very moving. And it's, Under the shadow of thy throne, thy saints, thy saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. So we have all these trappings around us. They're good things, friendship, jobs, health, you know, all good stuff. But sufficient is thine arm alone. Only God is fully sufficient um, to help us. So we take baby steps to trusting bit by bit. And we will soon see that when the horses and chariots fall through, when they the chariots rot and the horses go away, 
God is still there. When our jobs fail, when our health fails, when our friends let us down, or our family, God is still there. Sufficient is thine arm alone. Mm, great thoughts. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heavens with his, the saving power of his right hand. Mm. Shall we pray? Mm. Some great thoughts there. Lord, we thank you so much for your righteous right hand with which you sustain us and save us. We thank you, God. Oh, so often we do lean on other things. These days, perhaps not horses and chariots, but our own strength, human strength, human endeavour, human ingenuity. And that can take us so far, Lord, but we know ultimately that we have a powerful creator, God, who flung the stars into space. Lord, nothing is impossible or too difficult with you or for you. And so we come to you afresh this morning and we pray, as Jenny has told us, maybe to take small steps of trust, to place our hand in yours, to trust you, to reach out to you in circumstances and situations that seem very difficult to us. And Lord, we will this morning remember, invoke, call on, trust in the name of the Lord our God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have a great day. Great faith-filled day and see God's hand deliver you safe. God bless you.